starting. Oh, we're live. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, and welcome to Judging by the Cover, the Amphibian Press group book club thing. I've never added Amphibian Press to that before. Um, today we're talking about The Girl with Seven Names, Escape from North Korea by Hey and So Lee. That's how I'm pronouncing her name. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, and I'm sorry, but I couldn't find a single episode of the TED Talks thing where they actually introduced her. They just start with her. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I chose this book because um, when I was, I think, 11 or 12, I read um, So Far from the Band Boo Grove, and I meant to look up her name because I read it when I was 10. Um, but that was about uh, World War II from the Japanese Korea side and it, I found it really interesting and I got to meet the author. It was a really good experience for me. Um, and I wanted, to, I've always wanted to know more about North Korea. So when I listened to her Ted talk and then I knew she had a book out, I had to read it. So that's why I added it to the list. Um, so uh, who wants to go first? Just give your overall impression of the book and then we'll talk about specific um, things. <laughs> I'll go first. <clears throat> All right. Um, my overall impression was um, I was sort of amazed at the fact that it read so incredibly plotline wise, like an adventure book, like the obstacles and then the resolution really seemed like it was pre plotted. And that was kind of the most amazing part to me. Like, just the, it was so incredible. Um, and I actually really enjoyed it and I found it surprisingly uplifting, um, which was not really what I expected to come out of this, but um, kind of just, you know, I, one of the most important things that I got out of this book was the kind of real side of North Korea because, you know, we get only the, you know, the dictatorship, the public executions, the brainwashing, like all of the like horrible things that are going on there. But, you know, when she starts off right away and she's like, I just want it to be better. I just want to go to my favorite restaurant with my family like that. I just never thought of it that way. And then, you know, once it was listed, I'm like, of course, that's true. But I just like didn't think of it as that. I just thought of this is this like crazy prison cell. And so having it be illustrated to me in this more like complete and balanced way of this country with this terrible government and dictatorship. Um, I think that was really important for me. And Sarah? Um, I had sort of a, a similar um, apprehension about how dark the story was gonna be. Um, and like Amy said, like very, very uplifting. And I think what struck me the most was when you think about um, stories like this, you know, escape from, from various regimes, you sort of assume like, oh, well, this person probably started out a beggar or they probably started out, you know, as as um, being sex trafficked or something along those lines. And while there's definitely you see those sides of North Korea in the book from her perspective, I thought it was really valuable to see it from a more affluent perspective and see that it was still terrible. Because a lot of times I think when we're inundated with with all of those awful stories, it can be very easy to sort of protect our, our brains a little bit by just being like, oh, well, obviously it was terrible. The person was a beggar. And um, I think it was, it's really good to get the other side of things um, and sort of, yeah, just like kind of jumpstart your brain into a different way of looking at it. So that was sort of my, my first reaction. <laughs> um, so, I, I expected, yeah, definitely um, something a lot darker, less like, I didn't think it was going to start out with her being a beggar per se. Um, if anybody, if either of you have read so far from the Bamboo Grove, I just looked up the author. It's, uh, she's Yoko uh, Kawashima Watkins. And that story um, is really, she's like little when it starts, when the bombing starts. And I feel like they went to Seoul, South Korea. So I don't know if they started out in South Korea and then they ended up in Japan. I know she was in Japan when the bomb dropped um, in my brother, my sister and I, but that story was very dark. It was like kind of, it was similar where you're trying to get 
somewhere safe. It, nothing is safe. Everything is scary. Um, uh, and so that's kind of what I was expecting. What took me the most by surprise um, were two things. One was that she loved her country. I don't know why that took me by surprise because you're born there. And, you know, you you love it. So I don't know why, but that one surprised me. And the second thing that surprised me was that she escaped by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that. Was <laughs> It was like... When I'm reading it, I'm like, you know, we're getting to the point where she's talking about going to China. I was like, something bad's gonna happen. She's gonna have to go to China. They're gonna have to go to China. The China and with the red shoes, like mm -hmm. I was like, she's gonna have to get. No, she went because she was curious, and then she got stuck. <laughs> and then couldn't get back. So, I know. That was I found that really interesting. Um, just the dynamic between North Korea, China, and South Korea, um, which I had no idea about. Um, so yeah, one of the things, the first thing that I want to talk about was the North Korean culture. Um, because I know, I don't know a ton about it. I knew some about it. Um, but the way that the regime manipulated the people to like tell on each other, you can't trust your family members, you can't trust anybody. Um, that was the scariest part as I was reading the book. Because one thing that I noticed about the author was she's one of those people who believes the bad stuff will never happen to her. And I'm very much not like that. I'm the person who always thinks the bad thing is going to happen to me. So reading this book, it was like high nerves, high tension. I, it was very stressful for me, <laughs> even though for the most part, it, everything works out, you know, I mean, literally she was, I mean, she was very smart and intelligent. That's why she was able to get through everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just, I kept thinking, it, you know, this is it. It's going to happen. And it never happened. I mean, it happened to her mom and her brother when they escaped, but it never happened to her. Yeah, she was incredible. I just, one of my favorite parts is when she just walks into, um, is it the Seoul airport? And she's like, I am a defector from North Korea. And they're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> And then they're like, wait, you just like took a plane here? And she's like, yeah. And they're like, huh? <laughs> you just like did that? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> that was so cool. And they didn't, I was afraid they were going to send her back because they didn't believe her because her, she lost her North Korean accent because she'd been in China so long and she, her Mandarin was so good. Like yeah. she was so good she, at hiding she faked that it she was so North well, Korean. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, you did it too well. <laughs> um, so what did you guys think about the North Korean culture? Um, I thought it was really interesting, like, I sort of had this vision of North Korea that, like, every crime you could get executed for, but it's no, only the crimes of, like, disloyalty. You can bribe, you can illegally trade with China, you can, it was all, like, just open, and I thought, you know, it would be a lot more, like, tense and strict and everybody has to behave perfectly, but um, it surprised me how much the black market was just a part of life and just kind of how you went. And it didn't really matter what laws you were breaking, whether it was drugs or smuggling or anything, as long as it wasn't disloyalty or something that, um, you know, would negatively impact the vision of the great leaders. Um, so that was that was really interesting. That was kind of the most interesting part for me. I think one of the most interesting parts for me was how insidious the control was. Cause like, like Amy said, like you expect it to be this like iron fist and in a lot of ways it was, but you couldn't see it unless if you really looked deeply or if you had something as a counterpoint to it. Like when she starts to learn more about the world outside and, you know, especially China being right, right on the border. Um, I thought it was really fascinating to see how, much control they exerted without appearing like they're exerting control and you know doing a making the the population the, the general population do most of the work for them um with like the telling on your neighbors and mm -hmm. and all of that and um just how it really wasn't about um it wasn't about laws it was about loyalty and the the level of um how deep the caste system went and how detailed it was and how it was completely based on loyalty. Cause like you, you always hear about caste systems, but um, usually it has more to do with wealth 
um, or at least usually my understanding of it. And obviously some social standing, but with it just being loyalty and how you can screw up with just the smallest thing, if it's, you know, against the leadership is just really horrifying. <laughs> but also so that it's not to you, like if you screw up your whole family's going down. Right. Yeah. Like, and once you're down, you, it was like impossible to get back up. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is her mother because her mother was so amazing. I think the reason that she was mm -hmm. able to hide successfully in China and get to South Korea was because of her mother, like watching her mother's um, business dealings and how cunning she was. Mm -hmm. um, like, I felt like she was really an, is, is really an amazing woman. Um, and I felt so bad at the end when she wanted to go back to North Korea, mm -hmm. like that, like broke my heart. Um, and I mean, I, I had seen the pictures of her in um, the United States, so I knew she didn't go. But still, the fact that she wanted to was really sad um, because that was the other thing is it life in North Korea is so different that it was hard for them to change, to live in in what, what she called the their realization of freedom mm -hmm. because they had no idea what it was like. Um, they knew how to bribe people to get what they wanted. They knew how to smuggle goods. They knew, they knew how to live in North Korea. They didn't know how to live out here. Mm -hmm. Um, and watching that struggle was really hard. Like, um, I, I want to say her name wrong the whole time, but I don't want to call her the author the whole time either. Um, but how Han so lived in China and she made even in China, she made it where she was like, I don't want to be a waitress anymore. What do I have to do to like, you know, become more prosperous? And she was able to do that. And I think that's because of her mom, but also it was an easier transition for her into South Korea because she also had Kim um, who could help her transition. I, you know, I don't know. Your turn. <laughs> Amy? Oh, okay. I'll oh, go. Yeah, she's... Um, <laughs> okay. asking. Um, yeah, her her mom was just a a total bad. Um, I think one of the things, and this is something that I'm actually just sort of coming not to terms with, but that I'm sort of exploring in my own um, personality and psychology. But like, how much what we see of our parents affects how we navigate the world, which is like obviously kind of. A, a duh thing um but i think it it affects us in these really small ways and just seeing how her psychology developed throughout the book you know part of that's maturing but also as she started to face the same things her mother probably faced you know to a different extent um and how at each point she did have these thoughts of like well you know my mom would do this or my father would do this or you know thank goodness my parents taught me this thing or all of these these aspects and it's like you don't realize how much your parents are training you for the world and i wonder i'd like to hear from her mother from like her actual mother's perspective to see how much of it was a conscious choice and how much of it was just like this is the way it works um because there were some points during the story where i really wondered if her mom especially when she was saying goodbye to her if her mom knew, um, because the yeah. parents always know way more about us than we think they do, <laughs> um, <laughs> than we'd ever like them to. Um, so yeah, I, I think that'd be really interesting to find out, like, were you training her? Or were you just doing the best you could by your children, which obviously most parents do. But. Yeah. I just wanted to say on that note, she had the special shoes on and her mom mentioned that she noticed the shoes. I think she knew. I think she knew <laughs> or at least subconsciously maybe, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know like not only for, um, Hyunsu? is that how you say it? Hyunsu? Hyunsu? I don't know. Um, Min Minna is also her name. Um, not only, f um, for how the mother raises the main character, but, um, kind of her own disillusionment, with the party because like you sort of get the feeling this whole time that like she 
well, I don't know. I guess I was biased because I knew she would escape. So I kind of imagined the escape would come from the parents. So I'm kind of interested in going back and reading it without thinking that the parents are who send her away. Um, because like, yeah, there's the mother wants to go back and all this stuff that you guys kind of said. Um, I don't really know if I'm saying anything new, but um, it was just a really interesting thing that like, I I want to... I, I want to get more in the heads of the people who were partially disillusioned mm -hmm. and why they stayed, why they, you kind of get why she wants to go back because, you know, um, she had a good life. She had a better higher status in the hierarchy. She had her uh, family there primarily. Um, but kind of, I want to know how many people feel like they're choosing to stay and how many people feel like they have to stay and kind of what their feelings on that are, or if they're not really thinking about it and just sort of like going along because when she escapes, she does, when the mother escapes, she does say she's starting to become disillusioned with the party, or maybe it's a little before when she's on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and they break so many laws. Like they know that it's not, um, they know, you know, it's, they're not respectful of the laws. They break them. And like, that's kind of part of the culture. So just kind of that, like, that mix of brainwashing, but also rebellion, but also staying. I'm so curious of kind of like what the psyche is. And I feel like we got some of that um, from the protagonist, but she left when she was 18. Um, and so I, I'd be curious of a longer standing person, kind of just like what is happening there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she left during this, you're already in a transition. You're already not concreted concreted um, fixed into society um, yeah and you're already growing and, up and thinking about leaving your family and like right you know. so, and yeah it's, it's much different to leave when you already have a foundation and family and siblings and yeah and life in north korea when her mom's growing up because the story starts when her when her parents met mm -hmm. um for people who don't know but life seemed good Mm -hmm. for them i mean there was still you know the whole thing of songbun which is like their hierarchy or whatever like the people who are lawyer have better songbun than um the people who fought against them or whatever um so they they came from good families um but also things that her mother did like to be with her father um she got a divorce which is like really bad and um so, I mean, she did a lot of things, but she still maintained her status. Um, and a lot of times it was through bribes, which I thought was interesting. It makes sense, though, in a in a place where everything is give, everything you need is given to you, then you can't ever have, like, anything else. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense that people would be easily bribed, um, especially if they have power. So I just found that interesting, the way, the way that... Korea was back then and then as we kind of watch it deteriorate throughout the book um was really illuminating and I think that's probably why mm -hmm. she stayed because when she was young and had the potential to do whatever she wanted she it was a good place to be it sounds weird but it was <laughs> <laughs> well certainly better than it became right yeah. <laughs> yeah especially once all the rations were falling short and the well, that whole thing the, came uh, in. the soviet union fell and i guess they were like they didn't want to take korea. help from the yeah. new non-communist government they couldn't take help they wouldn't help them oh i thought it was that he had refused the help i thought it was that they refused to help well. them <laughs> there was we'll have to check. I'm, sure it was, I'm sure it was a combination of things <laughs> <sex. laughs> well i mean think about it if you're the soviet uh, not the soviet union if you're russia do you want to support another country i don't know so <laughs> i wouldn't think so just there was what i know now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, there was lots of refusals everywhere nobody wanted to help anybody or be helped so it was mm -hmm. just bad and turned mm -hmm. into a famine um and <laughs> that was, uh, another thing that happened that was kind of like yeah this is really bad was when they were locking their outhouses and they had to give their feces to the school for fertilizer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty good clue that things are bad. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so I want to kind of talk about her accidental escape um, because 
like I said, I was expecting it. And like, I think Amy said, I was really expecting it to be like, you have to leave and the parents were going to send her away and, um, danger and no, it was, it was curiosity. <laughs> um, the place was also like, uh, kind of a, it was in a bad situation. Like, um, there were more hangings. The famine was really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I was trying to think what else happened right around the time she was leaving. Her dad had passed away. People were stealing. There was a lot of, like, other crime, the not normal crime. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can see why. But she totally had plans to stay. She wanted to be an accordion player and go to an economic university or to your school or whatever. Um, yeah. And she just wanted to go see China for a couple of days and ended up staying until after her 18th birthday. So what did you guys think of that? Like, <laughs> um, just sort of like her escape. Yeah. Like I was really surprised by her escape, which was kind of a, it was very yeah. anticlimactic. <laughs> I know it kind of was. And I thought it was actually even more poignant that way because she makes this like huge rebellious life decision. She doesn't see her family for 13 years. And it's kind of just for this, like, a little bit sneak away vacation. And I thought that was really, like, heart-wrenching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, yeah, her whole future changes. And she has to figure it out. And she does. But kind of just that, like, it was supposed to just be, like, going and visiting an aunt and uncle a little bit illegally. And that was just, like, whew for me. Well, it's very relatable, I think, in a lot of ways, too. Because I think a lot of us when we're getting to, you know, 17, 18, the like edge of adulthood, we have our, our driver's license or we have a teeny bit of freedom and it's like, I'm going to go make this decision. And then it's like, oh, well, shit. <laughs> 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 um, and just seeing like, okay, well, there's obviously a lot of consequences, you know, even for, for us living in a country that, you know, is a, quite a bit better in some ways. And just thinking about like, oh, like how, how much she must have realized that, or how much she must have thought that she was still in that sort of level of protection and like, oh, well, like it's really bad and like people are starving and, and stealing and like there's definitely some of this bad stuff going on and clearly we're not as perfect as I thought, but like it's still going to be fine, right? And just that continued assumption and then suddenly that when it comes crashing down around her, like, oh, I, I can't go home. Like, it's it's actually really bad. Yeah. Like, this is life threatening. And just how heavy that must have been. And it's just like, it's just a little rebellious childhood choice. And yeah. I think that made it, her story um, more relatable for people who have never known things like that. Because I think that's something that we all, or most of us, have at least done to some extent. So. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of... The, and the sweetness of the vacation. Like, not only the fact that it was a sweet vacation, but she has all these different ice creams, and her family spoils her, and they say, oh, can't you stay a few more days? And, like, it's such a, like, lighthearted thing right before, like... Oof, you know? And... <laughs> And there's this element of, oh, I don't want to go home. I want to stay. But it's in the same way that, like, when any of us take a vacation, you might not want to go home. But it doesn't mean I don't ever want to go home and not see my family again. Right. Like, I just want to extend it for a week. <laughs> um, so one of the other things that I wanted to talk about um, before we talk about the last thing. Um, sorry, I just realized the, the other, the, the, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about, I had forgotten to put on the list, um, <laughs> but would be the difference in North Korean experiences, um, which that comes up kind of at the end of, um, the book when, uh, her mom is thinking about going back, um, where they talk about people who were starving and were the lower, um, uh, in the caste system and everything, um, and they, they had an, a really easy time transitioning to South Korea because it was so much better for them. But then you had the people who were doing well in North Korea. And when they went to South Korea, it wasn't easy. 
Um, and I wanted to talk about that mostly because I think a lot of us only think about the the bottom tier, the people who, who as soon as they leave are happy to be gone. Um, and seeing that with her mother was <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Um, seeing that with her mother uh, and her brother was really difficult and I think hard on them as a family. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what just happened? My computer was about to die. I'm so sorry. <laughs> The thing popped up and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> like Sarah's gone and I am out of things to talk about. <laughs> I'm so, so, so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so we're just talking about the caste system and how the people in the lower caste had an easier time transitioning to South Korea than the people mm -hmm. in that were higher up because uh, I think a lot of people only think about um, the people who have an easy time transitioning when leaving. Yeah, I definitely... I thought that was really interesting, especially because it was sort of the, it was a good bookend almost, um, no pun intended, with the beginning of the book where you see all of these wonderful things and, well, wonderful for, for those who are higher up in that caste system, and you get hints of how B to be lower on the system, mm -hmm. but not... You know, just just like little glimpses through her more childhood, ch child, childish, <laughs> sorry, um, childhoodish um, lens, and then at the end you're seeing like, well, in some ways that makes it so much easier to leave, and there's so much less conflict, internal conflict, because it's like, oh well, but it's not that. I'm not starving. I'm not hearing stories about this old man eating his grandchild or whatever you know <laughs> all these awful terrible things yeah and even <laughs> are you okay yes i just had a bunch of books leap off my shelf you're haunted um <laughs> yeah so just just that juxtaposition and i think it was it was really valuable to to see that because you're so wrapped up as the reader in her story which is fascinating but you also are wondering like well what about what about her friends what about these people that she left behind who you you, you don't hear about you know you, you hear about what happens to her brother and to her mother and other people in her family but it sort of adds this background redemptive arc um which i think was really i don't know it helps the book feel more hopeful in a lot of ways, um, which I mean, it's a really uplifting story, like like Amy said before, um, but it sort of helps globalize it a little bit more. Yeah. For me, um, so wait, the question is kind of the difference between the lower casts and how that affected them. We talked about yeah, lots of things, there. so I want to like come back and answer yeah. the correct thing. Um, <laughs> and um, Oh, wait, one second. I gotta, I gotta focus on okay. something else. Somebody else talk. Um, so one thing that I did want to mention real quick, um, which is kind of mentioned in the beginning of the book is that she's not, she's not at the top of the cast. She's not low, right. but she's not at the top. Um, so the people who lived in Pyongyang, Pyongyang, yeah. uh, they were like the top of the top. Um, mm -hmm. and she, she had good song and everything, but she didn't live there. She wasn't quite, um, that high, but she had an uncle who lived there. Didn't she visit mm -hmm. an uncle there? Um, Un uncle cinema or uncle, uncle rich. I think it was uncle rich. Cause uncle one cinema of, of was over on the coast. Right, right. That's who she went to when her dad was sick. Mm -hmm. Um, which I loved that too, by the way, that she used like uncle opium uncle poor mm -hmm. uncle rich and aunt pretty and aunt tall and aunt old um because I she know used their names like, well I, I wasn't sure if she also if that was a nickname system that they used within their family like when she was little or if it was simply to protect their identities and not make up a bunch of names well she said at the curious. she said at the beginning of the book that she had to change names and, right um but it wasn't that sure would that literally was... be the easiest way to do it. So right. I don't, I don't know, but like the ease there was, and it was also easy to keep track. 
you know, mm-hmm. Uncle Cinema, oh, the one who owns the movie theater. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the different uncle names were cool, but it made me think about what I would call my uncles. That would be an interesting question to answer. <laughs> it's kind of, like, funny to think about, though, like, um, uh, names are such a fascinating thing because it's like just thinking about if you were to kind of call uncles and aunts by like defining characteristics or people in your life that and just like the different names are such an important element in this book and I love that it's not only hers but the other ones around her that like play into it and it's a it's a way of keeping track of your place in the world in a lot of ways like how she would choose names with specific meanings or um or her mother would and just how much weight is put on what a name is not just like it's my label it's what you call the person with the space um but really really choosing it and choosing one that you that embodies things that you want to embody i thought that was kind of fascinating also how um gunsu's mother chose her name and it was like will be obedient and listen to her husband Mm -hmm. or whatever um it was, like, it was like quiet and always listens to her husband or something yeah. it was the meaning of the name that she gave her like we get it, we get it. <laughs> yeah that was so like uh, a yeah. yeah yeah i really didn't like her like she i realized she was far from the scariest thing in the book but i felt like because mm-hmm. she was sneaky she was conniving i felt like that was just bad i was so happy when she ran away i did away i did like towards the end when um she's finally in South Korea and she has this the conversation with I can't remember her name but the woman who is like the cam girl and she has this realization of like it could have been so much worse my like crappy marriage to this guy who is kind of like a dweeby video game passive dude like so not the worst thing that could have happened yeah and I, I liked that because in, in a lot of ways throughout the story you're like well whew, at least the worst didn't happen and it's nice to over see over and over that. and over again <laughs> <laughs> like literally every time something happened i'm like oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen mm-hmm. badness is gonna nope didn't happen she's good she's good we're safe <laughs> but then and i hope she, that that's i hope that that's true like i hope that that's accurate and that she wasn't she didn't feel the need to gloss over i feel like i feel yeah. like she i feel like she there were certain truthful yeah because, i mean i there's no reason not to um but yeah, the, the human trafficking was a serious issue um, that she saw that she didn't experience. And that was what I, mm-hmm. I was expecting. Every time she met a guy and she was like, he's a, you know, I got a bad feeling about him right away. I'm like, here we go. You know, because <laughs> it's, that happens to so many people, even in this country, like human right. trafficking is a serious problem everywhere. Yeah. So, and I mean, intuition is such an important thing. Like, I mean, obviously in the narrative, you're looking back, but like, I don't know. I really trust the author that she did have these intuitions and she did have this like really amazing sense for things. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really interesting part of the book that was worked in. I also thought it was funny when she didn't have intuition about stuff and it still worked out in her favor. Or, or it didn't, but she was able to salvage it. Well, yeah. When when she sent all the stuff to North Korea and Mm then they were, they were caught by the guards or whatever and the commander yeah. called her and said i'm a friend of your mother's and i'm helping her how much money was in the mm-hmm. bag and she was like she felt like it was totally safe to talk to this person like can't yeah be. but because she was so calm they were like oh it's fine yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. was like, that was like wow there's so many parts that is just oh. mm-hmm. yeah i really liked the book it like read like an amazing adventure book and it was more like <gasps> How's she gonna get out of this one rather than uh oh her life is about to get awful because of this like terrible thing mm-hmm. i was i kept waiting for it to get bad because i don't i don't know you think north korea it's gonna be bad i just kept waiting for it but it like i mean towards the end you know her mom and her brother do end up in prison but she doesn't even know they're in there until they, they've been in there for like six months mm-hmm. or something so even that didn't seem so bad because as far as she knew they were only in there for three months or whatever yeah. Um, yeah. I, it was this book was not at all what I expected. I'm so glad that I read it. Um, I feel like I know a lot more about the Koreas um, mm-hmm. than I did before, and that's one of the places that I've always been kind of interested in, and I've always been interested in um, 
that area during World War II and all that history. Um, because, it, I mean, it, even over here, it played a huge role in, in forming who we are today. Mm -hmm. And I liked that she mentioned, you know, how come North Vietnam and South Vietnam are together and East and West Germany are back together, but the Koreas are still separate. Um, and I thought that was an interesting, it's like, yeah. Yeah, that one was, that, that was a really interesting thing. Um, that struck me as really interesting too. Also like talk about an apropos time to read this book. Right. Completely accidentally. <laughs> I know. Um, that, like when, when the announcement was made, I was like, our family can see each other again. <laughs> I just finished this like three days ago. And I was like freaking out. And everyone's like, yeah, it's great. And I'm like, no, but I like just read a thing where I wanted this to happen. <laughs> I have more emotional investment in this than I did before. <laughs> um, and one of the other things that I think is really um, a serious thing that I, I had thought about before, but not in this level was how you get through a large company when you're an illegal immigrant. Um, because immigration is a hot button issue in our country right now. And I think a lot of people uh, tend to get caught on the label and they forget that these are people. Right. Um, and reading this and having her and her and she was not prepared for her brother to come he was supposed to stay in north korea so she had to improvise like she improvised her way illegally through china i know that was amazing and then they get caught in fucking sorry <laughs> <laughs> what else <laughs> not me this time <laughs> i'm sorry but that was ridiculous they made it through like how many miles yeah and, and then miles. laos with but, constant stops in China because of this celebration thing. Yeah, it, I was, I was at that part, I was talking to Ravi, my husband, for those who don't know about it. And I was like, you know what? A white guy with money just showed up to save the problem. It's a total white savior thing. And if this was fiction, that would be a problem. But since it's real, that's what you should be doing. <laughs> Go be that guy. That makes yeah. me so happy, though. I'm like, I'm so happy there are guys like Dick out there. <laughs> I was, I was really, I was really um, scared when she first mentioned him, mentioned seeing him while they were traveling together, because it's like, okay, she's mentioning him and describing him, and it's either detail. just because he's like one of the first white people in the book, or she's mentioning him because he's going to be significant, and of course, like up until this point it's like don't trust him don't do it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he ended up being a really cool dude so yeah that was that was definitely like it was interesting because for me i was like oh i kind of actually trust him and i wonder if it's because like i just have an inherent trust of white people because it's the like similar thing and mm -hmm. because of everything um but i was actually like thinking that he might be a solution when she first mentioned him because I was like, why would you mention somebody like that? I guess from a narrative thing, it just seemed more likely that he would play a role to help. Um, yeah. Because like, especially because from context, like white guys can do a lot of harm in a lot of ways, but this wasn't necessarily a case that it would seem like he would kind of make the problem worse. I mean, there are things they obviously could have done to do it, but like it wasn't as immediate a thing. And in this case, you know, there's the white privilege thing and the Western privilege and the money. Um, so I Currency, was thinking, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, um, and just you know, if you're if you're Australian and traveling around Asia, you probably have some means. Like, you know, she's like, oh, it turns out he wasn't rich, and I'm like, I mean, I don't know. She never like says how much money he has, but I'm like, I bet like. He's not rich for like, you know, Australia, but probably compared to countries with the yeah, currencies where the I don't know the currency in Australia, but where that's worth more. It's than, Australian um, dollar or whatever ASU. Oh yeah, A AUSD. I knew that. Um, and also, I think if a man like that is going to be in that area, you know, it's not in like a super tourist. Or I didn't get the impression that it was a super touristy city when um they first started traveling together it's sort of like well you might be there for more official or business like purposes as opposed to just like i'm here to look at the view 
and usually those types of people, you know, that they have connections mm -hmm. and they have, like you said, like they have the money and they also have a little bit more understanding of the people, um, hopefully, because they're interacting with them on a different level. And, yeah. Uh, so that when, when I realized he was, you know, not there just for fun, it was like, okay, maybe you can yeah. be more helpful than just your average white dude. I just remembered two things that I wanted to talk about um, real fast. Um, so two things that really got me about this book. One was the fact that what they were saying about the U.S., obviously some of it was very untrue, but some of it is kind of true. And it's like interesting how like kind of the most effective brainwashing and slander and negative things in general do have some element of truth. Like when they're like, oh, in the U.S., they like dogs better than people. And I'm like, how many times have I seen on Facebook, I like dogs better than people? Like, and I was like, that's not entirely wrong. Like, the U.S. kind of has a world weird relationship with dogs. <laughs> and, um, Especially white, white U.S. I yeah. Like. Well, it's, yeah. Also, it's also out of context, like... Yeah, oh, obviously. Because a lot of us don't like to deal with people. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that if, yeah. if push came to shove, we would choose to save a dog over a person. But some people would. <laughs> But that's what they were like selling was yeah exactly well yeah because it's like you take this kernel of truth and then distort it and so like if somebody you know who had that brainwashing like meets an american who's like oh my god i i just like like dogs better than people like i can't do people but animals are so nice they'd be like oh it's true <laughs> and um it just kind of makes me wonder just about things that i've been taught like what kernels of truth are then like distorted into um a like a horrible image um, obviously I've not been subjected to the kind of brainwashing, but you know, everything has those elements of propaganda and mm -hmm. putting spin on things. Um, and the other thing that was really interesting to me was at the beginning, um, when she starts school, the indoctrination. Yes. I want um, to okay, good, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing about that, like, that struck me is the fact that like, I don't necessarily believe that it's all a bad thing um like it it is misused but kind of like teaching children like gratitude for the people who like put you where you are respect love for your country love for your parents like those are actually kind of good things that i feel like um at least like elements of modern society in in america are like really starting to kind of reject in a lot of ways. And um, it was interesting to me because like, I just kind of like felt some value. It's obviously very misused. Like they do not do it right. But kind of the, the fact that like, I feel like there is a basis in kind of something good and that's kind of why it can effectively start because like teaching children, like, you know, um, just, just to be grateful and to be like loving and to be honoring of sort of like the good things in their life and in their country and kind of what got them there, I don't think is at all a bad thing. But yeah, it's just then you take a good concept and turn it into a dictatorship. Well, the, <laughs> the part that I part. wanted to, to talk about was, which it's included in uh, um, what you're talking about. So um, just because a lot of people, I think, probably don't know that much about North Korea. Um, what Amy's talking about is in the book, when she starts school, they learn about, they learn basically a, a false history about the great leader who was Kim Il-sung. Yeah. Um, and then, or Kim Sung-il, no, Kim Il-sung. Anyway, sorry. I always get those mixed up. Um, but they would do like um they'd have a bunch of kids with cards and they'd have to hold up the cards into the mm -hmm. stadium it would look like his face or the flag mm -hmm. or and it was this great production and a proud moment for for the country and all of that um but another thing the thing that that struck me and frankly scared me a lot was when they started doing the denouncing mm -hmm. in elementary school they would have to point at someone and say that they caught them doing whatever that was wrong. Yeah. And the teachers even had to do it. And in work, you had to do it. You had, this was a daily thing. So that if some, if you saw something that was wrong, you were already conditioned to just tell. Yeah. Like, and that was terrifying because, well, I'd, I'd heard a story before and it really, I, I couldn't understand it. Like I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Um, and this, when I read this, it was like, oh, 
that's that's how this happened. It was about a boy and his mom was trying to get him and his um, brother out of North Korea after their father died. And he told on his mother because he thought that's what he was supposed to do. Oh. And she and her brother and his brother were killed. Oh. So by the time he made it out, you know, that's, it took his, his family dying for him to realize what was happening. Um, so that's kind of what I was expecting too, going into this story, um, which is why I kind of liked that it was a little bit lighter and um, easier to digest, but also it, it still showed us how they're able to get away with all of this stuff, how they were able to get away with it. And, mm -hmm. and, and it kind of clicked that, that other story in for me. Um, and that was, that's terrifying to me. That, yeah. That that could happen. I think one thing that was really um, telling too was how that, um, the, the denouncing system, how that affected her later um, once she was out of that situation and out of yeah. that, that whole environment, she would denounce herself, mm -hmm. you know, mentally and just the level of like, gaslighting it's i mean that's that's what it is is, is gaslight, gaslighting and, and manipulation yeah and how you can see the choices she's making even the small ones are so affected by this like well i'm i'm bad i'm a bad person i don't deserve to get married because i gave up this like shitty opportunity and just how much because I, I feel like the real effect of that is in the small things and mm -hmm. i mean obviously the bigger well, thing that was an extreme well, obvious but yeah it was you know just like all of these smaller smaller things and just it the, the lasting effect and she's you know at the very end of the book she's talking about how she's coming to terms with it and and processing it but it's like that's gonna be there for her whole life more than likely and that was another thing um a lot of times she said that she would make packs with her friends. So she would denounce her friend for something and her friend would denounce her for something, but they like mm -hmm. agreed on it ahead of time. Yeah. So they wouldn't be mad at each other. And sometimes they would denounce themselves. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like they're devoid of human decency. It's just, they're forced right. into these situations, which I think yeah, was... a lot of people have this kind of demonizing view of North Koreans. And it's like, it, it's not, they're still people, you know? Yeah. And, and that like, love and protection for the people like not the people close to you but just like the the human decency like when um was it when her mom snuck them onto the train and then everybody in there said um no we haven't seen anybody and they all they all lied for her and nobody nobody knew nobody knew her and it was just kind of and i did love those examples of just like helping a stranger even though it's so dangerous that happened again to um, sort of a uh -huh. counterpoint to that when she was sneaking her mother and brother um, on onto the carriage and all of them all like the they they've been speaking and then she says oh they're they're mute they can't speak they're mute and no one says anything yeah and yeah just that that act of trust in complete strangers I think it's really uplifting and hopeful when it's like oh no we got you <laughs> <laughs> you broke up a little bit there i didn't hear what you said Sorry. no i just said it, i i think it's really uplifting when um like complete strangers you you put your trust in them and it's like it's okay we've got you we don't know yeah them, but we've got you so. yeah yeah sorry i have terrible internet it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so do we have any closing remarks? I think that's about it. I don't, do you have a copy of the book, um, the next book, Amy? Uh, I don't. I tried to get one, but it's on ebook. Um, but I can, I can intro it. Should I intro it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Sarah, did you have anything to add on this book? No, that's, I think we covered a lot. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I'll think of like 10,000 things that we, that's, I, I, know. Still, I still think of things I wish I said for the hate you give discussion. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's what group chat is for. Yeah. And if you want um, more, you got to be cool and join our group chat. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. might regret it though. <laughs> our, our next book is uh, Amy's pick. You want to introduce it? Yes, uh, the next book is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. And the reason why I picked this is basically 
Uh, I've never read a John Green book, and I feel strange being a person in the reading book literary world and not having read any John Green. And a friend of mine said, um, a friend of mine who kind of knows what I like said, if you read a John Green book, read this one. Um, I don't really like young adult fiction. Um, and um, so I'm not like quite sure um it's not really my genre which is part of the reason why i've never read john green if i read more young adult i probably would have um but yeah i just wanted to give it a try and on a recommendation i picked this one i haven't read any john green either so i'm looking forward to it cool i haven't read any john green either <laughs> so all right completely new pool um so yeah and we will hopefully get that done in may cool. and not june <laughs> Collection of people. <laughs> I, I I heard fool. That's oh. <laughs> it's like a completely new fool. Yes. What do you um, know? <sighs> no. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, we will figure out a date to talk about that later. But hopefully, it'll be in May. More timely. Yeah. All right. Um. I guess that's it. So bye. Bye. Bye.